Well, hello there, and you join us here today to have another look at the market. It's been a little while. Things have changed, and we're here to bring them straight to your brains. For the best prices on pre-owned watches, check out watchfinder.com. You'll find everything from Audemars Piguet all the way through to Zenith and everything else in between. Tom, the market has changed. Let's talk about it, because mm. prices go up, prices go down, and that means some watches that we have been lusting after over the last few years are getting closer and closer. How does that make you feel in your uh, your warm cockles? That's good. It's kind of topsy-turvy land out there where uh, the pre-owned prices are more than the new prices. And that doesn't sit right with me. Um, I like things... If a, if a watch smells like another man's cologne, it should be cheaper than the original retail price at new, shouldn't it? Um, but that doesn't seem to be the case. No, it does not, Tom. And it very much continues to be. But we're seeing more of a settling, um, especially in Rolex. Okay. We're going to talk a lot about Rolex today, and we'll talk about some other oh, brands yeah. too. But I think Rolex really serves as the barometer for the rest of the market because I think it really led the way for this idea of asset class watches. Um we all love a good piece of asset, except when it means we can't afford the watches that we want most. And I'm going to talk about some of the most popular watches, starting with the Daytona. Daytona is, a, I think that's probably chief of most people's wish lists when it comes to watch collections, right? That there's your most wanted, I would, I would imagine. Yes. If I can liken it to uh, serial packet prizes, it's the one that comes up least. What? Now, Tom, let me describe for you the cheapest Daytona that's out there. It is the Steel and Gold 116523. So if you're looking to kind of keep up with contemporary trends of having a bit of steel and a bit of yellow gold, this is actually the cheapest one. It's cheaper than full steel. It's got gold in it. How does that work? How does gold work? No, no, no. I believe it was sent to us from the sun. Ah, and the Egyptians harnessed it and stored it in bricks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm good um and then melted them to make cows <laughs> <laughs> that watch is now fourteen thousand one hundred and twenty five pounds and let me tell you something the rrp of the cheapest daytona has recently gone up to thirteen thousand two hundred pounds so this is less than a thousand pounds away from the rrp of a daytona that's pretty good that is pretty good. I mean, it's all yeah. It's so so. You're just paying. You're paying about a thousand pound more for the convenience of being able to get a Daytona today sooner than you would if you were to buy one from an authorized dealer. That watch, the one one six five two three, isn't a current watch, and neither is the cheapest steel Daytona, which is more expensive than the steel and gold one. So the discontinued black dial one one six five two zero, that is a fifteen thousand nine hundred and fifty pound watch. So still coming closer to RRP, bit more than steel and gold. But if you really want a steel Daytona, they're getting cheaper. Cool. Um. For another popular example of a Rolex watch and some prices, we'll have a look at the Submariner because the cheapest Submariner, which is uh, a Submariner date, 16610 is now £7,470 on the pre-owned market, which is less than the current RRP of the Submariner date, which is £9,000. Granted, that is the old, old aluminium bezel, more vintage style Submariner, but you can purchase those for quite comfortably cheaper than the RRP of the contemporary Submariner date. Those, That's the right way round, I feel, for these kinds of numbers. Yeah, that's the right way round. Happy with that, happy with that. What about ceramic, though? What about, I want, the, want a new one pre-owned. How much do I have to pay? There have been a few iterations of the ceramic one now, but they all look very, very similar. So if, if you want to compare more, you know, like dragon fruit to dragon fruit, looking at the cheapest Submariner ceramic uh, is the no date version, the 114060, which you can pick up for about £9,045, about the same price as the RRP of the date version, but compared to the current ceramic no date, that is £8,050. So still less than a £1,000 gap there. Speaking of big price shifts, actually, one that surprised me, the GMT Master 2 Sprite, the black and green uh, Ned Flanders left-handed version, 
Tom. That was very popular, released a, a year or so ago now. That watch was very, very popular, very sought after, and the uh, the pre-owned prices were very, very high. They've actually come down quite a bit, still higher than the £9,800 RRP, but lower than they were before, now at £15,950. So some of the really hot pieces, uh, like the Celebration Dial, uh, Oyster Perpetual as well, things like that, the individual model, um, configurations that were very spiky, those are starting to soften off as well. Tom, but it's not all about Rolex. So let's have a look at a few other key models from a few other key brands that indicate uh, more of the same news, really, that I think things are starting to settle in the industry uh, and will continue to do so into 2024. You're familiar with the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch, correct? Oh, yeah, Moon. Moon. <laughs> M-O-O-N spells Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch, Tom, and the <laughs> Sapphire Sandwich version uh, currently available today. Over the last six months, over the pre-owned price of £5,500 has held firm. Very steady. Good. Flat as a very thin French uh, breakfast delicacy. And what's the RRP of that one? Oh, seven thousand five hundred pounds. Oh well, that's good. So it's kind of a good place to be. It's uh, cheaper than new, but the value is holding. You can buy one pre-owned, save on a bit of cash, get the lovely smell of someone else's cologne uh, as a bonus, mm. and not lose uh, any more money additionally on that, which is kind of what you want, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, more of the same. Cartier, the Santos Blue, that's the hot one. Everyone wants that one. That is also holding firm over the last six months, £5,950. And Tom, uh, another staple of the watch collector's uh, catalogue is the Tudor Black Bay 58 in blue. And it's the same story there. Holding firm over the last six months at £2,300 on the pre-owned market. All good news for people who uh, own those watches or are buying those watches. Ultimately, really, what more can we ask for except for them just to kind of keep up with inflation? That's nice, isn't it? Enjoy it for free. Hi. Anything else I need to know before I go back to just looking at G-Shocks? Well, Tom, um, you don't happen to own a collection of Richard Mille, do you? Um... No, that's just rubber bands in there. <laughs> Easy mistake to make. Um, <laughs> we saw over the big spike of watch prices that the the, the, the most sought-after pieces were the Audemars Piguet Royal Oaks, the Patek Philippe Nautiluses, the Rolex uh, Daytonas, and, of course, Richard Mille. Richard Mille, incredibly expensive, incredibly hard to get hold of, very prominent features in high-net-worth investment collections. And actually, whilst the other brands took a bit of a hit uh, after the big spiky spike and into the crashy crash, Richard Mille seemed to somehow get away unscathed. Now, I think that may have been to do with the fact that there aren't very many of them. They don't appear on the market uh, that frequently, that people purchase them for investment. And the kind of the best thing to do with investments when it comes to spikiness and crashes and things is just to hold fast and stick it through another 10 years like that you know, being sensible it's also known as right but i think now people are starting to let go of them we're seeing more of them on the market and we're seeing prices start to come down on richard Mille. um i think it's an indication of a brand that has been in its a, a bubble of its own in a way very much controlled by the brand and its collectors i'm certainly keeping hold of mine for now um because i am going clay pigeon shooting in a couple of weeks and they will make great fodder for my shot tom oh i thought you meant the shock absorbing could uh their movement could handle the recoil of the rifle Oh, we'll find out, won't we? Yeah. Well, there you go. That is a look at the market as it stands today. What is your take on how things are going? Do you think we're going to start to see some stability or is there some more downward trajectory to go yet? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to take advantage of some of these falling prices, you will find a bunch of watches over at watchfinder.com. Link in the description below. Thanks very much and goodbye. <laughs>